So I have had the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II for about a week now. And I would say back in August of 2022, I picked up the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I. But before that, I got the Sony Alpha 6100 that I'm using right now. So my video might look a little bit different because I still up to this point have been using the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I for this type of shot. But I also wanna specify that I have the Sony zv one mark one above as a top-down shot and that's where it's been living for i would say the better part of a year now but i used to use it for vlogging going out and doing stuff or wherever i think it's a fantastic camera for point and shoot and doing that kind of stuff and for top downs or wherever and uh, i really do like the camera and i don't regret getting it what do i like about the sony zv e10 mark ii over the mark one and who do i think the cameras are for and i kind of want to talk about it from a perspective of somebody using it for a content creation level of just being entry level. Maybe they're looking and expiring to become a YouTube partner, which I have done using the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I and the Sony ZV-1 Mark I. And what I've done with the Alpha 6100 up until this point was actually using it for webcam, uh, for streaming over on Kick and Twitch, but I switched over to Kick. So you can find my live stream link down below, but I was using it up to this point for that and now what i've pretty much been doing since you know i've gotten other cameras and been doing other stuff i kind of using it for a little bit of photography for you know photos for the thumbnails for my youtube videos doing product reviews and i've kind of started taking pictures of my son and stuff like that because i kind of want to get into photography work and this is the only camera that i have that has a viewfinder and i think the color science and i think the camera just it looks good in my personal opinion with the right lens on it and Obviously, it's an older model. You know, we're all the way up to the Alpha 6700 now. And if I was to do anything, I probably would sell this camera to try to get the Alpha 6700 for photos and everything for that specifically that purpose. Because I think that the Alpha 6700 in comparison to the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, I think this one is better for video work and for what I'm trying to do. And again, if I was trying to take photos, then I would go with the Alpha 6700. Um, that's just my personal opinion. But again, the Alpha 6100 I'm using does have a busted audio port. So I was able to get it a little bit cheaper than the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I. And I'm saying all this because I'm approaching this from a person who's not a person who is taking on clients. You know, I'm not a person that's going out shooting gym videos, commercials for businesses, interviews for businesses, churches, or anything like that. I'm somebody who's sitting literally in their home in a relatively, you know, unsound treated room, regular size. That's the type of person that I think that this camera is for. The type of person who maybe are is just gonna be doing, you know, top down videos like this and showing items and stuff like that, showcasing, maybe doing some drawing and penciling and, and whatever, or maybe doing some craft work and everything. I think that this camera, the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I, or even the Sony ZV-1 is going to be good because look how good that looks, in my personal opinion, you know what I'm saying? And you can obviously still shoot in uh, HLG3. That's what most people recommend for, you know, 8-bit. Obviously, I still think you can use uh, S-Log3 and stuff like that. But who I think the Mark I for now that the Mark II is out, I do think that this one is going to be more for those people who are going to shoot in intelligent auto mode who maybe are just gonna use the kit lens and that's it. They might pick up, you know, another lens or whatever, a prime lens, but that's that that's it. And what I would recommend if you are gonna pick up a prime lens, if you're gonna be vlogging and stuff, pick up the Yong new 11 millimeter lens. Um, if you're gonna be doing talking head videos like this and maybe vlogging and, and maybe using it for streaming and stuff like that or doing Zoom meetings, all that stuff, then you might wanna take up the 16 millimeter from yang new and i'm still going to pick up the 11 millimeter for me because i need it for my workflow and i will have all the accessories that i use for the sony zv e10 mark ii down in the description it obviously will work for the sony zv e10 mark one but you know i just already have that storefront uh, already set up or wherever on amazon so definitely check it out um but yeah i would say you know obviously both of those lenses are going to work because they're under 300 dollars you see what I'm saying? They're not gonna pick up the Sigma 16 millimeter lens while I'm using right now on the Alpha 6100. They're probably not gonna pick that up because that's probably gonna be a little bit too more expensive. I've talked about it in previous videos, at least at the time of recording from what I saw, this, the Sigma 16 millimeter lens was like around $400. I picked it up for like, 
I think 370 something or whatever when I first picked up the lens. So obviously it's in great demand, especially with new cameras coming out, etc. So, you know, it's a good lens. Don't get me wrong. Even the Sigma 30 millimeter lens that I have right here, I picked it up used off of KEH. I'll leave that camera store down in the description. I'm not affiliated or anything like that, but they have really good camera, uh, used camera gear. And you could probably pick up the you know, Sony ZV-E10 Mark I for cheap up there and stuff like that. And you can also obviously get them without the kit lens and maybe pick up a lens from them and stuff like that. Um, so again, your choices may vary, your experience may vary, but my experience with using KEH has always been flawless. I've never had an issue or problem with them. And again, I'm not sponsored by them, not affiliated with them or anything like that. I just think they're a really good company. But back to the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I, I think that this camera, like I said, is going to be for those people who are just at most probably maybe put a camera cage on their camera and i, I recommend it for the mark one um as far as i know there's no cage out right now for the sony zv e10 mark ii i imagine you know this time next month or something like that since the camera just came out it, it, we will probably start seeing camera cages but the only thing i've done is use actually the top rail of this camera cage but it does ex uh, say extensively give you a, a beefier grip so it's very welcomed for the mark one but outside of that, they're probably just gonna use the kit lens. Or like I said, maybe pick up a 16 millimeter prime lens or something like that. They're probably not gonna pick up a zoom lens or anything. And if you know anything about streaming or using webcams, this is going to be that C920, you know, from Logitech or wherever that people use for webcams. This I think is going to turn into that. My experience with the Mark I has been great other than the overheating issue, but I was able to uh, rectify that with, you know, the Yulanzi fan. And I would say if you're gonna pick up, you know, the Mark I, Mark II, whatever it may be, get the Yulanzi fan. Because again, it's like a $40 fan. It keeps the, the, the actual back of the camera, you know, uh, cool and everything like that so the camera won't overheat so if you're doing top downs or talking head videos like this recording or using a dummy battery and then using the hdmi port to record uh with a you know hdmi usb capture card or something like that this is like 10 bucks or something um then obviously it's going to be a little bit easier workflow and obviously you're going to want to cool the camera so the fan will be very helpful for that but overall like i said with the mark one I think this camera is for those people who are going to shoot in an intelligent auto mode who probably won't ever touch a color picture profile. You know what I'm saying? Who want a little bit looking, a nicer looking sensor and a nice looking uh, picture quality than the likes of the Alpha 6100 or something. Or maybe they're coming from the 5000 series or something like that. Or maybe, you know, they're just getting into cameras and they're looking and everybody's recommending this camera. And like I said, they're probably just gonna stick with the kit lens, shoot in intelligent auto mode, maybe take some pictures or whatever with family, stuff like that. And like I said, just do entry level videos like this they're not going to go out and shoot commercials and client work and you know shoot interviews for documentaries or something like that business work you know like i said commercials gym videos all that stuff even though i've seen people try to use this camera for that and i've seen people say this is like my b or c camera meaning you know my third fourth angle or something like that or second angle but like i said for most people who are maybe just picking up this camera and that's it and they're just gonna shoot in intelligent auto mode, I still would recommend getting a prime lens, like I said, for under $300, whether it be the 16 or 11 millimeter from Yongnu. But overall, that's who this camera is for. It's gonna be for those people who are not gonna shoot you know like i said color picture profile who are okay with the image and stuff out of here and like i said i've reached youtube partner by primarily using this as my a cam you know what i'm saying and varying success obviously my videos in the beginning when i was using this camera i was still trying to figure out lighting and coloring and you know eq and microphones all that stuff or whatever so i wasn't doing the best but i still even with those struggles still a lot of videos have done pretty good and decent however for my size and like i said reaching youtube partner using this camera so again it's very versatile and i think it's going to be good for a lot of people i would say the sony zv e10 mark ii comes in it's going to come in for those people who are going to be looking to use a little bit more of their knowledge of a camera maybe because they picked it up using you know the the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I or another camera out there and who are looking to maybe shoot 
in a, I would say HLG3 or S-Log3 or some kind of color picture profile, maybe they're not using intelligent auto any mode anymore, or maybe they have the drive and the ingenuity and doesn't don't mind like taking a little bit extra time to learn how to effectively use a camera you know what i'm saying and like i said have that passion to be able to do that and they want a little bit more out of their camera especially with that time lapse mode being built in or wherever if you have the right sd card for even higher codecs and forming and mats and stuff like that but you can still use a lower one for the time lapse but like i said having a little bit more knowledge who can sit down and watch tutorial videos on cameras and not feel overwhelmed and everything that's who this camera is going to be for in my personal opinion and that's what i would use it for so i'm probably going to do a two month or three month four month whatever update on using the camera my thoughts and opinions and, and everything like that when i get a little bit more experience with it but like i said the joy of using this already and having like i said the capability of having the camera already do the time lapse for you built in and the only other camera out there that i know that does that on at least on the sony system is the alpha 6700 i might be wrong on that but as far as that's what i understand so and this one being more for video it kind of makes sense being able to do that and for it's geared towards and like i said 10 bit the color science in this and everything being able to color grade it getting cheap LUTs out there like from paul leeming the LUTs that i use or whatever they're like 30 dollars for uh, uh, at least one LUT for all the color picture profiles or whatever for the sony cameras they have it for other cameras as well but i think you know it's going to be for those types of people you know what i'm saying the people that are not going to leave it intelligent auto mode the people who are going to pick up you know more lenses or wherever where when they can on a, for bargain or used or you know like i said for cheap and stuff like that that's who the sony zv10 mark ii is for the mark one who is it for it's going to be for those people who are going to leave it in intelligent auto mode, like I said, who are going to sit there and maybe not even put a camera cage on the camera, who are gonna use it as a top down, you know what I'm saying? Who are just shooting just cozy comfort vlog videos or something in their room or something like that. They're not gonna be able to really justify spending a thousand dollars for this camera and when they can get this on sale for like 400 and something, if that, or maybe 500 and something regular price. And like I said, both cameras are wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I still love the Sony ZV-10 Mark I. I still shoot an HLG3, you know what I'm saying? I still use it for talking head videos and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with this camera. It's just, like I said, I wanted that extra little bit more. And that's why I picked up the Mark II. It was because I wanted that time-lapse mode. I wanted that 10 bit or whatever to get a little bit more color so I can start learning how to really color grade and stuff like that. But for somebody who's maybe might just upload it and the most they might do is for their own little project for like, I would say college or something like that for an interview or something, th this is gonna be perfectly fine. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna be put on the big screen in some kind of theater or you know, you're gonna be shooting a Netflix documentary or something like that. But they still would, even if they learn color picture profiles on an 8-bit camera, they still would be able to get a good use case scenario out of it and still do good for whatever kind of projects they're gonna be doing. And then later on, after they do that, it might be two years down the line like me, or maybe even three or four, 10 bit is still, you know, really good. And at that point, they could probably find this for half off or something like that, or, you know, 200, $300 off or something. You know what I'm saying? At that point, and they could move up to the Mark II or something. But like I said, I, I could still get a use case scenario out of the Mark I. But like I said, those are the use case scenarios I would say both of these cameras are used for and who those are for. And like I said, there's no really correct answer. It's just what camera is going to fit your needs. You as the content creator, which one are you going to get the most out of? Do you want to learn to color grade? Do you want to take it that little extra step? Do you want the time lapses for your videos? Just a overall really good camera and you can learn and it can grow with you and stuff like that. And you can build a successful channel and you're taking content creation seriously. Or are you more of a casual person? Are you a person that's probably gonna do some videos or whatever of just you knitting, you painting, you doing whatever. You don't mind using the kit lens. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you're not caring about getting professional studio lighting or stuff like that to light your space. 
maybe casual vlogging and stuff. But like I said, you're not taking it too serious. Content creation is just something you like to do every now and then. You're going out, hanging out with friends, taking photos of them and everything, of your family and stuff. Then this is gonna be fine for you. You know what I'm saying? There's no need to go out and get the Sony ZV-10 Mark II. So hopefully I made that a little bit clearer. Let me know in the comments. I tried to approach it and explain it in a way that people, like I dumbed it down or whatever to explain it in a way so people can get a grasp of what I'm talking about. But like I said, either one, I don't think you can go wrong with. I think both of them have their place on the market. Find this video informative or helpful. Don't forget to leave a like on it and let me know what your thoughts are on both of these cameras down below. If you own either one or you're thinking about picking up either one. And if you're interested in the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, uh, you can check out the video playlist that's popping up on your screen right now. If you wanted to know about the accessories that will work for both cameras, there will be Amazon storefront page down below as well in the description. And that's obviously going to help me out a little bit. I'll catch you guys in the next one, though. Y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.